So this is our second and last lecture on chapter 7. We just have an introduction to the topics of internal forces and essentially beams only, one-dimensional entities. And so, last time we introduced this sign convention. The sign convention can be a little confusing. Here's a focus just on the shear force and the bending moment for the sign convention. And what they try to do is they try to show you a member that's been cut and everything. In the, so you're focused on the member that's to the left. And so the cut is right here. And what is the positive direction assumed for the shear force? Downward on that edge for the member that's that's off to the left and pump uh, and uh, and then otherwise on the member that's left to the right to be equal and opposite as you pull them apart and investigate the shear force would be upward now let's say that you focus on a cut and a cut and so the member is sort of pulled out in between i mean this is they're trying to show you like this is all the cases so you're not focused on the, the right or the left. Really, you're focused on the right here, like that, and then the left here, like that. But, but it would be upward on that side and then downward for the shear force. It's like it's taken out of the middle. Um, I don't have any great insight as to why historically it was picked that way, but that's the sign convention, yes. But I do have a good indication of the sign convention, why the bending moment is picked that way. And I think I tried to describe that. And that'll help you, if you can remember it, keep things straight. Basically, put the top in compression and the bottom in tension. And that's what happens when you load a beam. All right, now we need to move to what we call equations and diagrams for these shear and bending moments. So, we want to plot V as a function of X over the span of the entity. Here is a beam. Uh, what do we have here? It's pin supported A, roller support out here. It's nameless. Let's call that B. It has a distributed load over a certain section, has a point load over at, at a different location. And what they can do is say, you know, why don't we get an equation for the shear force as a function of x, where x goes between 0 and a, and then get an equation for the shear force for any location of x between a and b, and then any location of x between b and l. And then we'll plot it. And when you plot it, it looks something like, as they've shown right here, it starts with the very high value of the shear force at x equal to zero, and then it drops off. And for this case, it's dropping off over that linear, uh, uh, normally, well, it's, a, it's just a, a, a distri constant distributed loading W over that section of the beam. And then there's no loads, and then when it hits that point load, there's a significant change in the shear from one side of the point load to the other side of the point load. And then the shear is even negative in this region where X is between B and L. And then it goes back to zero at that support. All right, so it's like it, so you can plot the shear force over the length of the beam. And then you can also calculate the bending moment as a function of location, then plot that here it's like quadratic, then it's linear, then it's linear. You ready to solve a problem? I think it's easy in concept, a little more difficult and challenging in practice.